Hi everyone, I'm Pat Prokop out here in the heavenly backyard garden. We're in the middle of the month of October right now, and the garden is getting, eh, it's kind of quiet at the moment, but the heavens, they're filling up with all kinds of astronomical targets. Now, there's been one target that I've been after for a long time, but some trees out to the uh, south and southeast of me have been blocking my view, but Hurricane Helene came through and knocked one of those trees out. My neighbor's tree it fell in my yard, but I cut it up. Anyway, it's giving me a better view of the sky in that direction. And what's in that direction this time of the year? It is NGC, New General Catalog 7293, also known as the Helix Nebula, or sometimes known as the Eye of God Nebula. Anyway, let's photograph the Helix Nebula. Welcome to Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. So the equipment that I'll be using will be the Orion Eon 130mm refractor telescope. It has a focal length of 910 millimeters, almost perfect for a target like this and the camera that I'm using. Meanwhile, it is sitting on the Skywatcher EQ6R Pro mount. I get fantastic tracking with this mount. I just love it. Uh, many times my RMS uh, uh, value is in the ballpark between 0.8 and 0.6, which gives me fantastic tracking uh, during the night. I can track easily for 300 seconds or 180 seconds, uh, or you know, obviously 60 seconds, but uh, I'm gonna be tracking at 180 seconds tonight using the RGB filters. So the camera that I'm using is the Player One Poseidon. It's a monochrome camera. I just love this camera. And I have a seven position filter wheel on here with the Amplia filters. And I have the RGB, the red, green, blue. I also have the narrow band, 4.3 nanometer narrow band filters of the hydrogen alpha, uh, sulfur two, and the oxygen three. And I also have a luminous filter on there, the UV IR cut filter. That's the equipment I'm using. I have a mini computer on board right over here, and that's working with the Windows 11, and on that I have Nina. So let's go inside and set up Nina so that we can get the final images of the Helix Nebula for tonight. Let's go inside. All right, I'm inside right now, but first let's take a look to see exactly where the Helix Nebula is located up in the sky. Now I'm at 32 degrees north latitude, uh, and it's rather low in the southern sky. You can see it right over here uh, in the uh, sky. And I would imagine the uh, further farther north you are, the lower this is going to get. If you're in this example in, in southern England, uh, it's going to be way down here, or the northern United States, southern Canada, it's going to be way low in the southern sky. Uh, however, there it is right there. And uh, looking at the uh, uh, constellations uh, in and around the area, there it is in Aquarius. And even a better view of this, Aquarius. It's in the left leg of Aquarius, uh, between uh, Capricornus and Aquarius, and not too far away from where Saturn is at the current time. Anyway, that's where it's located. All right, let's start from there. It is also about um, 650 light years away, which is rather close, astronomically speaking. And uh, so it's one of the closest, if not the closest, planetary nebula to the Earth. All right, let's go to Nina now and set things up to uh, record this target. All right, I'm in Nina now, so the first thing we want to do is uh, go to the Sky Atlas and look up the Helix Nebula. I just typed it in right there, and there it is, and set for Framing Assistant. And as we do that, I can look at the uh, position right now. It's about an hour before the reaches its zenith, or its highest point in the sky. And uh, there are my trees. I need to lower this a little bit, particularly this one right here, because that's the tree that came down uh, during the hurricane. So I'm, I'm uh, th happy about that. Okay. <laughs> All right, there it is right there. Let's uh, um, add this target to a sequence. We'll click on that. I'm going to go on the sequencer. I'm going to go into my um, narrowband uh, main menu, which is the uh, monochrome camera. And first thing I'm going to do is go into my templates. I have some uh, pre-templates set up. I'm going to go to uh, Pat's start menu. I'm just going to drag it over here to where it says start area and just drop it. And 
Uh, then I'm going to go all the way down and go into my Pat's End menu right here and drop it where it says Sequence in Area. <laughs> Makes it simple, doesn't it? All right. Now the uh, uh, filters I'm going to be using, I'm going to use the HA, but I'm not going to use the O3. I'm going to use the red. I'm going to use the green. And we'll add one more by clicking on this option here. And this is the add a copy of the se uh, sequence above and add the blue. All right, so it's right there. All right, I'm going to do um, 180 seconds on all of them. So we'll do that, 180. All right. And the default gain on this camera uh, for this is uh, 150. All right. And uh, so I'm every I got everything to go. Uh, I'm going to delete dither after three exposures because I have it set over here. So I'm just going to delete that right real quick right there. All right. And also I have it set so that if for some reason the camera gets off uh, or the, the telescope gets off the uh, center of the target, uh, Nina will check for you to see uh, if it's off target, and I'm going to set it, it defaults to 10 degrees, but I'm going to set it to 2 degrees. If it's with, uh, you know, within 2 degrees, off by 2 degrees, it will re slew and center it back into the target. So I like that little function right there. All right, I'm going to just put this onto luminance because that's going to be for uh, the uh, slewing and framing. So make it the uh, brightest filter of all. And all right, um, I got an autofocus after HFR increase of 10. And um, I have it uh, autofocus after all filter changes. All right. One thing about autofocus, I learned that during a full moon, autofocus doesn't work very well. It, it, it's a little bit temperamental during a full moon, at least in my case. All right. I'm ready to go here. So um, let's make sure I got the uh, uh, EQ mod ready to go. It's uh, not parked and it's tracking sidereal plus uh, periodic error correction is running. So I got a nice... A periodic error chart going and I'm ready to roll so let's hit the go and see what happens here all right the autofocus is done now we're going to uh, slew and center the target well I'm not going to do it the com computer is doing it for me and Nina plate solve and I'm off by two degrees two degrees and 14 minutes so it's going to, it says it's not inside tolerance, so it's going to re -slew to the target. Usually it takes one or two to get it. That's all it takes. There it is, right? Smack dab in the middle. Error, 36 seconds of arc. That's not too bad. Uh, not bad at all. All right. And as typical with a nearly faux moon, the guiding is kind of rough for tonight. That's why I don't like shooting on of nights of faux moon. Uh, but anyway, here we have it coming up with the uh, image. This is the H alpha. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Even with this raggedy uh, tracking, let's zoom in to see what the stars look like over here. And, uh, you know, not bad. I mean, not bad at all. Look how round they are. Uh, that's pretty good. All right. I have a lot of images from the last several nights before the moon was full. And so let's go over to the Pixin site and stack them and then process them. All right, let's go into Pixin site right now. I'm going to go to script, batch processing, and then weighted, uh, weighted batch pre-processing. There it is right over here. Now, what I have, I've already loaded in the frames. So let me show you, though. Uh, here are the light frames here. All right, I got the blue. And I got the greens, and I got the hydrogen alpha, and I got the red. And then I also did the, uh, I, I added flats. I did flats for all of these um, filters. And then in the calibration, I had everything set uh, properly. Um, I had the flats set. And then over in the um, properties, I don't have any dark files. I don't need dark files uh, with this camera. So no darks, but I do have the flats. And you've got to make sure you unclick the darks. And that's what it says here. You have no darks. That's okay. Um, and then over in the post calibration tab, I have um, 
the, the images. And I want to drizzle uh, these images. And I'm just going to use the minimum drizzle of a one scale. And I've got to make sure that's clicked on right here. And it will show you over here. Now, if you want all the images drizzled, which is a pretty good idea, uh, once you click on the one here, you can do this apply to all groups. So you could say that. And if I didn't want to drizzle, for example, and I could, it's not uh, drizzled, it's been disabled. Now, if I say apply to all groups, it's they're all disabled. But I want them to be enabled. So I click on that, and then uh, I can go through each one if I want, but it you know, is a shortcut. Might as well use the shortcut. I picked the directory. I, I made a directory, um, a file folder for it to save the images to, and it's, I called it the Helix All Filters. And then I hit the process, and once it starts processing, it's ready to go. And uh, here's the image of the processing itself. You can see it's all... Uh, done. It took a little bit of time, 48 minutes total to do all the uh, stacking with all these images. All right. So now that this is done, we can exit out of this. All right. Let's take a look at the individual files after they've been uh, stacked and processed. And here we have the green. And notice you got a nice view of the, the nebulosity right over here, but nothing showing up over here. But look at the, uh, the red. Notice the red, you have a different, a, 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 a lot more definition over here. In the blue, not so much. Just a, a slight hint of it right there, but it's mostly in the red. So let's take a look at the hydrogen alpha, and there it really shows up nicely there in the hydrogen alpha, and a lot of red emission light coming out of the uh, uh, nebulosity uh, uh, here. You can see almost three shells, one, two, three. All right, now let's take a look at, now what I did is I took the, the hydrogen alpha and the red, and I blended the two together using a little bit of pixel math, and I came up with this image here. This is the combination of the hydrogen alpha and the red. This is what I'm going to use for the red uh, channel, all right? And then when I put these together, here is the red channel, here, the, uh, the uh, image with the uh, RGB with the R being the hydrogen alpha and the red combo, combo. And then after doing that, I did the blur exterminator. And there you can see uh, not too much of a difference yet, but let's, let's just zoom in on this a little bit. And uh, let's go over here a little bit and just see if you can see any difference um, right there. Let's use the same image over here. I mean, that blur exterminator is really good. Now, look at the difference. Look how clean that is, uh, the difference between the two. Um, and over here, you can actually start seeing those knots showing up over here. Uh, interesting thing about this nebula here, uh, the Helix Nebula, is they have these, these knots uh, showing up. They're, they're all over the place. You see them on the outer shell here. And if you notice the tails on them, they're all pointing away from the center. Uh, the center being over here, a white dwarf in here somewhere. Um, I don't think that's it there. That might be it right there. I don't know where the white dwarf is. I mean, that could be, but I doubt it. Anyway, <laughs> these little knots, I'm going to show you a better picture of these in a moment, but these little knots, each one of them are about the size of our own solar system. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, okay, let's, uh, let's move along. And let's look at the, um, the starless view. And there it is right there. And uh, that's after taking the stars from Star Exterminator and then uh, doing some processing and so forth. Uh, this video is not uh, involving the actual processing. Uh, otherwise, it'd be way too long. Uh, here we have the, uh, the image with the stars returned. And there you can see that outer shell. You can almost see a third or fourth shell coming out over here. Um, but there you can see uh, the 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 um, nebulosity, the eye of God, I suppose. And then here it is passed through Photoshop. I, I did a Photoshop here uh, processing. And you can see a little bit more of the, the knots showing up. And it looks like it, look, it does look like an eye, doesn't it? Uh, anyway, like the iris right here. Um, and the, again, you can see some of the knots. Well, let me, I did, I did some more Photoshopping on it. And this is the final image. And boy, look at that outer shell there. But uh, there you can see the knots all over the place here. Um, oops, I want to go down a little bit. Right over here. 
Let's bring it over here. And uh, yeah, it's very interesting. Uh, the Helix Nebula, there it is in RGB. I didn't use a color camera. I used a monochrome camera to get this image. And I've been trying to get this image for years now. And uh, I, I, I tried to capture it with the uh, one-shot color camera. It did okay, but nothing like this with the monochrome camera and the Antlia filters. Look at that picture there. I mean, I, I got to say, I'm impressed with this picture here. All right. Let's go back outside. I gotta admit, to me, in my humble opinion, that's a fantastic looking picture. Anyway, uh, this is a fantastic setup. And since the hurricanes, we had Hurricane Helene and Hurricane Milton pass on through. Milton didn't do much damage here, but Helene surely did. And I had taken my telescopes down. Now I reassembled the telescopes and I put the uh, Orion E on where the uh, Celestron 11 inch edge used to be. I have it in this position here so I can see a better view of the south southeastern sky now that I have a better view of that direction. So anyway, thanks for watching and I thank all my supporters that have been helping me uh, keep this channel up and running. Thank you very, very much. There you can see the name scrolling up on the screen right now. I like to thank you all that. If you if you like to help, you can also you know buy me a cup of coffee. That's always good. And uh, you can su subscribe to my page. Please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and share uh, with your friends if you like sharing these kind of videos. And also, uh, uh, if you like to join my channel, you can do that as well. well. Thank you very much for all who have done that so far. Anyway, I got a lot of targets in in, in mind. Well, of course, we got the Orion Nebula, the Horsehead Nebula. That's my favorite, the Horsehead Nebula. That was the first Nebula I ever shot. I'll be shooting that again uh, with these new filters and so forth and the new position of this telescope. And uh, I mean, there's just so much going on. There's also galaxies up there. You got the uh, M31. I just took that last month. Uh, the Andromeda Galaxy, there's the picture. And uh, I also just took a picture of M33, one of the neighbors, uh, the Milky Way M33 or the uh, uh, Triangulum Galaxy and the Andromeda Galaxy are all part of the, a family of galaxies. We're all brothers, I guess, in galaxies. And uh, uh, the uh, Silver Sliver Galaxy, I just took that uh, a couple weeks ago as well. That was the first image I took after I put the telescope back up. I was testing with that. Uh, on the uh, Silver Sliver Galaxy. Uh, was that 891, NGG 891, the uh, Outer Limits Galaxy. Anyway, yeah, lots of things coming up. So, uh, and then the planets too. Jupiter is coming in view now uh, up in the Eastern sky after mid or before midnight now, and Mars is rising right around midnight. So I'll be working on those. I'm gonna try that with this telescope this year, see what happens. I'm gonna put the uh, uh, 2X uh, extender on there to see if I can get a better view uh, with this uh, telescope versus the 11 inch Edge HD. Anyway, thanks for watching and you remember the heavens are just filled with majestic wonders and boy are they ever filled right now this time of the year. Anyways, and they're all in the sky near you and even in your own backyard. So unless you need rain and we don't need any rain right now for a while, unless you need rain, clear skies everyone. <laughs>